Hello everyone, welcome to Mzanti's Breaking News. If you are new here, please consider subscribing as we bring you Mzanti's latest celebrity gossip and breaking news. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for your support. We highly appreciate it. Now, let's get into the video. Cases of coronavirus have been identified. More than 10 Two million people have been screened in communities across the country, and of these, over 15,000 have been referred for proper testing. Alongside this unprecedented public health effort are the measures we are taking to protect livelihoods, to stave off hunger and destitution, and to set our economy on a path of recovery. This evening, I wish to address you on our economic and social response to this global health emergency. The pandemic requires an economic response that is equal to the scale of the disruption it is causing. Our economic response can be divided into three phases. The first phase began in mid-March when we declared the coronavirus pandemic as a national disaster. This included a broad range of measures to mitigate the worst effects of the pandemic on business, on communities, and on individuals. The measures included tax relief, the release of disaster relief funds, emergency procurement, wage support through the UIF and funding small businesses. We are now embarking on the second phase of our economic response to stabilize the economy, address the extreme decline in supply and demand, and to protect jobs. As part of this phase, we are announcing this evening a massive social and economic support package of 500 billion rand, which amounts to about 10% of our GDP. The third phase is the economic strategy we will implement to drive the recovery of our economy as the country emerges from this pandemic. And central to the economic recovery strategy will be the measures we will embark upon to stimulate demand and supply through interventions such as substantial infrastructure build program, the speedy implementation of economic reforms, the transformation of our economy and embarking on all other steps that will ignite inclusive growth in our economy. We will outline this in the days to come. Over the past few days, we have been in consultation with various stakeholders. We've met with business, labor, and community constituency in NEDLEC. We've met with our premiers, MECs, and Metro mayors, and with the members of the Presidential Economic Advisory Council. Following these meetings, Cabinet considered various proposals and finalized the social relief and economic support package that stands at the center of the second phase of our economic response. This involves, firstly, an extraordinary health budget to respond to the coronavirus pandemic. Secondly, the relief of hunger and social distress. Thirdly, support for companies and workers. And fourthly, the phased reopening of the economy. The impact of the coronavirus requires an extraordinary coronavirus budget of around 500 billion rand to direct resources towards fighting the pandemic. This will include the reprioritization of around 130 billion rand within our current budget. 
The rest of the funds will be raised from both local sources, such as the Unemployment Insurance Fund, and from global partners and international finance institutions. To date, the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, the BRICS Bank, the New Development Bank that is, and the African Development Bank have been approached and are working with the National Treasury on various funding transactions. Some of these institutions have created financing packages that are aimed at assisting countries that are having to address the coronavirus crisis like us. This funding will be used in the first instance to fund the health response to coronavirus. An amount of 20 billion will be directed towards addressing our efforts to this pandemic. If we are to successfully manage the anticipated surge in cases and ensure that everyone who needs treatment receives it, we must provide for additional expenditure on personal protective equipment for health workers, community screening, and increase in testing capacity, additional beds in field hospitals, ventilators, medicine, and staffing. The nationwide lockdown has had a negative impact on the revenue of municipalities at a time when the demands on them are increasing. Additional funding of 20 billion rand will therefore be made available to municipalities for the provision of emergency water supply, increased sanitation for public, of public transport as well and other facilities. But they'll also be able to provide food and shelter for the homeless. Details will be announced in the adjustment budget tabled by the Minister of Finance. Another significant area that requires massive additional expenditure is the relief of hunger and social distress in our communities across the country. While we have put in place measures to protect the wages of workers in the formal economy and have extended support to small, medium and micro-sized businesses, millions of South Africans in the informal economy and those without employment are struggling to survive. Poverty and food insecurity have deepened dramatically in the course of just a few weeks. To reach the most vulnerable families in our country, we have decided on a temporary six-month coronavirus grant. We will direct 50 billion rand towards relieving the plight of those who are most desperately affected by the coronavirus. This means that child support grant beneficiaries will receive an extra 300 rand in May and from June to October they will receive an additional 500 rand each month. All other grant beneficiaries will receive an extra 250 rand per month for the next six months. In addition, a special COVID-19 social relief of distress grant of an amount of 350 rand a month for the next six months will be paid to individuals who are currently unemployed and who do not receive any other form of social grant or URF payment. The Department of Social Development will issue the requirements needed to access and the application for this funding. We will recognize we recognize that food distribution capacity of the government is not adequate to meet the huge need that has arisen since the start of the epidemic. 
The South African Social Security Agency, SASA, will within days implement a technology-based solution to roll out food assistance at scale through vouchers and cash transfers to ensure that help does reach those who need it faster and more efficiently. In addition, to fill the immediate need, the Department of Social Development has partnered with the Solidarity Fund, NGOs in our country, and community-based organizations to distribute 250,000 food parcels across the country over the next two weeks. We are deeply disturbed by reports of unscrupulous people who are abusing the distribution of food and other assistance for corrupt ends. We will not hesitate to ensure that those involved in such activities face the full might of the law. While there are several interventions that already exist within government to deal with the extremely high unemployment, such as the expanded public works program and the community works program, these are not enough. The coronavirus will lead to many people losing their jobs. An additional 100 billion rand will be set aside for protection of jobs and also to create jobs. Since the declaration of a state of national disaster over a month ago, government has put in place a range of measures to support workers' wages and assist companies in distress. By the end of May, the UIF's special COVID-19 benefit has already paid out 1.6 billion rand, assisting over 37,000 companies and 600,000 workers. 40 billion has been set aside for income support payments for workers whose employers are not able to pay their wages. We continue to provide assistance in the form of loans, grants, and debt restructuring to SMEs, to spaza shop owners, and other informal businesses. The value of this assistance to date is over 100 million rand. An additional amount of 2 billion rand will be made available to assist SMEs and spaza shop owners and other small businesses. The IDC facility to support companies to procure or to manufacture personal protective equipment has been utilized in the past few weeks with finance of 162 million rand approved to date. Other forms of support have been extended to artists, to athletes and technical personnel, as well as to waste pickers and public works participants in the environmental sector. While these measures are providing obvious relief to many companies and workers, it is clear that there is a far greater need across the entire economy. We will therefore be introducing a 200 billion loan guarantee scheme in partnership with the major banks in our country, the National Treasury and the South African Reserve Bank. This will assist enterprises with operational costs such as salaries, rent and payment of suppliers. In the initial phase, Companies with a turnover of less than 300 million rand a year will be eligible to participate in the scheme. It is expected that the scheme will support over 700,000 firms and more than 3 million employees through this difficult period. A number of the banks are already prepared to roll out the product before the end of the month. Government is also working on additional support measures 
for vulnerable and affected sectors like the taxi industry. In addition to existing tax relief measures, we will also be introducing a four-month holiday for companies' skills development levy contributions, fast-tracking VET refund payments, and a three-month delay for filing and first payment of carbon tax. To assist a greater number of businesses, the previous turnover threshold to tax deferrals is being increased to 100 million rand a year. And the proportion of pay as you earn payment tax that can be deferred will also be increased to 35%. Businesses with a turnover of more than 100 million a year can apply directly to SARS on a case by case basis for deferrals of their tax payments. No penalties for late payments will be applicable if they can show they have been materially negatively impacted in this period. And taxpayers who donate to the Solidarity Fund will be able to claim up to an additional 10% as a deduction from their taxable income. In total, these tax measures should provide at least 70 billion rand in cash flow relief or direct payments to businesses and individuals. And the Minister of Finance will provide further details on the above and other tax related announcements. In the implementation of all these measures, we are determined to ensure that women, young people, and persons with disability receive particular attention and support. The South African Reserve Bank has also made an important contribution to support the real economy. In line with its constitutional mandate, it has cut the repo rate by 200 basis points, in effect unlocking at least 80 billion rand in the real economy, and taking other steps to provide additional liquidity to the financial system. Several commercial banks and insurance companies have also assisted the economic relief effort by, among other things, delaying or reducing installment payments, providing debt relief, and waiving bank fees for grant beneficiaries. The fourth area on which Cabinet has resolved is the phased reopening of the economy. We will follow a risk-adjusted approach to the return of economic activity, balancing the continued need to limit the spread of the coronavirus with the need to get people back to work. As I have said previously, if we end the lockdown too soon or too abruptly, we risk a massive and uncontrollable resurgence of the disease. We will therefore follow a phased approach guided by the best available scientific evidence to gradually lift the restriction on economic activity. As we do so, we remain firm in our resolve to contain the transmission of the virus. We will therefore need to act with agility and flexibility in the weeks and months ahead and respond to the situation as it develops. On Thursday, I will address the nation on the measures that will be taken beyond the nationwide lockdown to reopen the economy. This crisis will not last forever, and the day will come when these measures are no longer needed. Until then, however, we must ensure that all our people receive adequate support. The scale of this emergency relief program is historic. It demonstrates that we will not spare any effort 
or any expense in our determination to support our people and protect them from harm. We will and we must do whatever it takes to recover from this human, social and economic crisis. Our country and the world we live in will never be the same again. We are resolved not to merely return our economy to where it was between, before the coronavirus, but to forge a new economy in a new global reality. Our economic strategy going forward will require a new social compact amongst all role players, business, labor, community, and government to restructure the economy and to achieve inclusive growth. Building on the cooperation that is being forged amongst all social partners during this crisis, we will accelerate the structural reforms required to reduce the cost of doing business, to promote localization and re-industrialization of our economy, to overhaul state-owned enterprises and to strengthen the informal center, sector. We will forge a compact for radical economic transformation that ensures that advances on the economic position of women, youth and persons with disabilities, and that makes our cities our towns, our villages, and our rural areas vibrant centers of economic activity. Our new economy must be founded on fairness, empowerment, justice, and equality. It must use every resource, every capability, and every innovation we have in the service of the people of this country. Our new economy must open up new horizons and offer new opportunities to all South Africans. Over the past month, South Africans have opened their hearts to each other. Even at this moment, when such great sacrifice is demanded of us, we look to a better future with optimism. Even as we find ourselves at a moment of great peril and danger, even as great sacrifices are demanded, even as we dare not allow our vigilance to waver, we look ahead to a better future. I have faith in the strength and the resilience of ordinary South Africans who have proven time and time again throughout our history that they can rise to any challenge that is presented to our country. We shall recover, we shall overcome, and we shall prosper. May God bless South Africa and protect her people. I thank you.